Doctor, I can't understand what's going on. I feel dizzy and, uh, how do I say it? I'm tilting. It didn't happen overnight. Like, I didn't wake up and couldn't stand straight. No, one day, I felt that my axis had shifted by one inch. Another day, it was two inches. And once, you won't believe it. It was 31.5 inches. That's alarming. What if I accidentally turned upside down and all my inhabitants fall off my surface? Ah, dear Earth. We ran some tests and are ready to explain an unfortunate combination of factors that has affected your axis. The last one will perhaps be the most unexpected and upsetting. It all started back in March 2011, when a devastating magnitude 9 earthquake struck off the coast of Japan. It was so powerful that not only did it shift Earth's axis, but it also shortened the length of the day. This earthquake displaced our planet's axis by approximately 6.5 inches and may have moved Japan's main island by about 8 feet. Like other similarly massive earthquakes, it also altered Earth's rotation speed. To make it easier, let's compare it to a spinning ice skater. When a skater pulls their arms close to their body, they spin faster by concentrating their mass near the axis of rotation. Something similar happens during the most powerful earthquakes. They shift Earth's mass closer to its rotational axis, causing it to spin faster and shortening the day length. The calculations showed that the Japanese earthquake sped up Earth's rotation by about 1.8 microseconds, which is about 1.8 millionths of a second. Not a big deal, but at the end of the day, every nanosecond counts. For comparison, the infamous Indonesian earthquake shortened the length of a day by 2.68 microseconds. It struck on December 26, 2004 at 058 UTC. The epicenter lay off the western coast of northern Sumatra, Indonesia. This powerful undersea earthquake triggered devastating tsunamis that swept across the Indian Ocean, causing widespread destruction and immense loss of life in countries like Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, and Thailand. Even coastal areas as far as East Africa had severe damage. The Earth's magnitude, initially recorded at 9.0 on the Richter scale, was later adjusted to between 9.1 and 9.3, making it the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in Asia. The faulting, that's when Earth's crust completely breaks and its parts slide past each other, lasted between 500 and 600 seconds, and it was the longest duration ever observed. The immense force of the quake caused the entire planet to vibrate by at least half an inch and triggered other earthquakes as far away as Alaska. All that immense energy the earthquake released caused subtle but quite measurable changes to Earth. The shift in mass slightly changed the planet's rotation, shortening the day. It also caused a small wobble in Earth's axis from 1 to 2.4 inches toward 145 degree east longitude. So, when it comes to changes in Earth's rotation speed and axis, it's all about the redistribution of mass. This can happen naturally through disasters, but human activities can also trigger it. Take the Three Georges Dam, for instance. This massive structure across the Yangtze River in China's Hubei province may seem to be an engineering triumph, but it's pretty ambiguous. Finished in 2012 after nearly 20 years, this massive dam is 7,660 feet long and 607 feet high. And yes, and yes, it is so big that it can affect the way our planet spins. Its reservoir is capable of holding 9.5 cubic miles of water, has enough mass to slightly alter the Earth's rotational inertia, slightly slowing the planet's rotation. According to NASA, the Three Georges Dam Reservoir could shift Earth's pole position by almost one inch and increase the length of a day by 0.06 microseconds. Dams aren't the only worry. If polar ice melts, water rushes into the oceans, hiking up sea levels, especially near the equator. This mass shift slows Earth's spin way more than dams do. You won't feel it day to day, 
but it can affect ultra-precise equipment, such as atomic clocks. To fix this, scientists suggested a negative leap second, making a minute 59 seconds to balance Earth's spin changes. Okay, so you're thinking you've got nothing to do with all those tilts. You don't build dams, right? Bad news. If you take regular showers, you're part of it too. Every time you turn on the tap, you're affecting Earth's tilt just a tiny bit. Thing is, our planet is always shifting and adapting, so even small actions like using water can influence its orientation. Over the past two decades, groundwater pumping has caused the Earth's tilt to shift by 31.5 inches. This water redistribution is equal to about 0.24 inches of sea level rise. It turns out that among climate-related causes, groundwater redistribution has the largest impact on the drift of Earth's rotational pull. But what is groundwater? It's the water stored beneath the Earth's surface, filling the spaces in soil, sand, and rock. It comes from rain and other precipitation that seeps into the ground collecting in underground reservoirs, aquifers. Unlike rivers and lakes, groundwater stays below the surface, acting like a natural water reserve. Thanks to it, we have a steady supply even during dry periods. Many people, especially in rural areas, rely on groundwater as their main source of drinking water. Farmers use it to irrigate crops, while industries depend on it for manufacturing and cooling systems. It sounds pretty harmless, doesn't it? How can something so useful cause our planet to shift? Well, a study covering data from 1993 to 2010 revealed that we've pumped about 2,150 gigatons of groundwater in that time. And this large-scale water removal has shifted the Earth's tilt and rotation. After we use groundwater, much of it eventually flows into the oceans, contributing to rising sea levels. In areas like Western North America and Northwestern India, people use a lot of groundwater. And it may have a connection to these shifts. Yikes, let's face it. All these findings are rather disturbing. But you know, understanding the impact of groundwater use is already a huge step in the right direction. Hey, I'm not done yet. This tilting issue isn't just about stuff happening on Earth we also need to look at space. We've talked a lot about water, right? Well, you know that the moon has a big role in that. Its gravity is super important for forming tides and all that. So one more thing that affects our planet a lot is the gradual movement of the moon away from Earth. These two bodies interact gravitationally, which makes Earth's rotation slow over time even though significant events like earthquakes occasionally speed it up temporarily. How did we figure it out? Glad you asked. Once, someone paid attention to ancient corals. After analyzing them, scientists realized that Earth had once rotated much faster. The thing is, corals grow by laying down thin layers of calcium carbonate. They do it daily, and variations reflect seasonal changes. By counting these layers, scientists have calculated the number of days in a year millions of years ago. They found that Earth had about 420 days per year 444 to 419 million years ago. But over time, the Moon's influence had caused Earth's rotation to slow. And now, we only have 365 days in a year. I feel robbed, you know? At the moment, the Moon is moving 1.5 inches away from Earth each year. That's about the same speed at which your fingernails grow. Astronomers have figured it out with the help of special mirrors placed on the Moon during the Apollo missions. For over 50 years, researchers have been sending laser beams to these mirrors and measuring the time it took for the light to bounce back. In any case, dear Earth, at the moment, your condition isn't critical. As for your inhabitants, they won't fall off your surface. All thanks to your gravity, pulling them toward your center. Just don't switch it off, and everything's gonna be fine. 
that's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.